start today, we'd like to pray. But Father, we thank you that wherever we are, that you're with us. Lord, we know that Teze's been rough again, and we do want to commit Teze to you and ask your blessing on Teze and on her family. Father, as we're together again in front of a video, we thank you that you can inspire us, you can speak, God, you can heal. And as Carol and I just open our mouths now, we pray that you would be the person inspiring what we do. We commit ourselves to you now. Amen. Amen. So the last time we were together, um, we showed you me, my Mimoji. And so I want to show you one that I'm sending to people at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Lockdown emoji time. Create, create, create. So here it is. Oh, hang on. So that one's sending oh. people a virtual hug. And the other day on our Keeping in Touch group, Dear Sophie sent us this poster. Can we see it? Yeah. I just hugged you in my thoughts. Hope you felt the squeeze. Which I thought was lovely. Um, and Ben's trains. Oh, is that been with her all been week? Been with me all week as well, from when we zoomed on um, on Sunday. Mm. Um, that's a really profound thought about how precious it is. Oh, hang on, hang on. Trains. How many of these people are on Zoom? Do they know what you're talking about? Come on, you need to explain what Ben said, so we know we know everyone knows exactly what you're talking about. Sorry, Ben, but it really has inspired Carol this week. So, thank you. Ben's a train fanatic, basically, <laughs> um, and he has amazing train sets that he set up in his. Um, shed and in his room uh, that he's managed to show us on Zoom, which is that's the wonderful thing about technology is that we've all been able to actually see each other and see each other's homes. And so he's been able to actually show us his trains working. And he has a very special relationship with his trains. Each one is. It's not just his trains, though, is it? It's scenery, it's yes. all, all the, the model bits that are there. These are stuff that he will have to be a certain size because he's got to get them out through his bedroom door, down the stairs, into the car, which his father chauffeurs. He said, what a lovely dad. He chauffeurs him to these exhibitions. exhibitions. Ben is invited. To. Wonderful. That's His babies get invited to exhibitions. Sorry. And he has this really special relationship with his trains. He really cares about them and nurtures them almost. And, uh, and he, has a, he has a real love for his trains. And that really, he, he said, I know this is a bit weird, but that's like the love God has for us. And it really spoke to me in a really amazing way. And when... Andy and I came together. We always uh, go away separately and prayerfully look at the passage we're looking at this week. And when I, Andy and I came back together to talk about passage, straight away, um, we both said, what do you think the passage is about? And I said, a relationship. And Andy felt exactly the same. I shouldn't be surprised because the Holy Spirit is working. And we, list, we, we thought about the Holy Spirit last week. And it was lovely. I was watching Breaths at Nine with Laura and it, she read from the message and it said the Holy Spirit is our friend. And I thought, oh, I've never thought of that relationship with the Holy Spirit before. In, in a, he's our helper. He's our advocate. He's our friend as well. Um, and I thought that's really that's really stayed with me this week as well. So we're talking about relationships and this passage of scripture that we're going to look at today is focus on relationships well for carol and me it's focused on relationships mm -hmm. you might read it in a different way but i i got kind of this like just a beginning to peel back of the curtains 
just that beginning to say, look, this is what the relationship is like. My father and I have this relationship that you can't see, but beginning to peel back. Oh, that came in here. There we are. But now that, that sense of Kurt just, he's beginning to draw us in. So he's beginning to draw his disciples into this. And whoa, we're there. So my big relationship in my life was with my dad, and lots of you know about um, how my father died a year after Andy and I were married and how much that affected me. Um, but I've got this lovely photo that um, hmm. has a great memory for me, um, and it just is appropriate for today, um, of me and my dad. I hope you can see that clearly on the screen. I was a little girl. Um, and he's really giving me an, a lovely big hug and reading a story to me, which is, and we're both really happy and smiling. And it's, it's very precious because it's, it's an amazing memory. So we're going to read now from John 17. And I'm going to read on my phone because it's in the Good News uh, Bible version. Um, and Andy's got it in his Bible, but I'm going to read from my phone. Jesus prays for his disciples. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said. Uh, he looked up to heaven. What did he, what he'd been talking about before, after Jesus finished saying this? And I, I just went, and that, verse 33 Again, this is this kind of appealing back of this. I have told you this. In chapter 16. So, so this is the verse. This is 33. Verse 33 in chapter 16. You can look at it later. I have told you this so that you will have peace being united to me. The world will make you suffer, but be brave. I have defeated the world. Is this, I have told you this so that you will have peace by being united with me, this relationship. We're united in this relationship. After Jesus finished saying this, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your son, so that the son may give glory to you. For you gave him authority over all humanity, so that he might give eternal life to all those you gave him. And eternal life means knowing you, the only true God, and knowing Jesus Christ, whom you sent. Now, there you've got Jesus talking about his relationship with his father. It's not a relationship which says, me first. It's not a relationship which kind of deviates. The, the two have that, again, we don't, this idea of, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit being one, one God, three. No, we don't understand it. We, we can never, but here you have within that Trinity a complete working together. Well, obviously, if they're all one, they should be working together. No? Because you know, they're united. But it's we're being drawn into that. It's disciples are being drawn in to this is the relationship. This is the relationship that. I'm, ex I'm exposing to you. I'm showing to you now. I'm bringing back. This is just before his death. So this is important that his, he he's wants his disciples, and that's us, to, to get a grip on this relationship. And that's what's lovely when we when we got together. I, I said, Karen, this is my relationship with Jesus. Oh, Ben, and that was you, Ben, mm. and Laura, mm. you. Over a week, you know, a week ago, began that. It's lovely. I have shown your glory on earth. I have finished the work you gave me to do. Father, give me your. Sorry. Father, give me glory in your presence now. The same glory I had with you before the world was made. There's, that. There's another aspect to that relationship. Jesus in obedience to his father. 
left everything. It's a, again, it's talking about the relationship they have. Jesus was willing, willing, freely because of his love for us and his love for his Father, freely to leave well, heaven. You know, no chance of understanding that. I have made you known to those you gave me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me. They have obeyed your word and now they know that everything you gave me comes from you. I gave them the message that you gave me and they received it. They know that it is true that I came from you and they believe that you sent me. That's a move on from Philip. The last time we took, we were talking about, Philip says, show us the Father. Show us the Father. Because you're talking about, so here Jesus is moving on from that again, saying to, you, you know it. They've begun to move from that, show us the Father, to actually it's starting to percolate through. They're starting just glimpses. And here is again, a fuller picture to try and bring them into fully understanding what that is. I pray for them. This is Jesus's words. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those you gave me, for they belong to you. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and my glory is shown through them. And now I am coming to you I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one, just as you and I are one. You and I are one. We're all one. That relationship, mm. it's not a case of... It's, it's, it's way beyond anything that I can communicate it's this is the relationship that the father has with his son and it's the relationship Jesus is praying that we will have with him but not just with him but with his father but, but within the family of God mm -hmm. you know you might there's loads of pictures of bride we're the bride but you see that unity I'm going to read that verse again um on here it is so they are so they may be one just as you and i are one we when jesus talked about before when we talk about you'll do greater things because i'm going to the father is this part of that greater thing that the world doesn't you know the world is selfish the world wants stuff the world puts us you know we if we're in the world we put ourselves first and we still too often put ourselves first we at the moment we see so much around us where people through the lockdown as sophie did were not able to cuddle we're not able to just go into grandparents houses i bumped into a i was in morrison shopping one else and the lady in front of me in the queue i her daughter was in my tutor group when at Royal Manor, and for somehow I don't know name, boom, just part I don't know. If you did, but anyway, so I knew her name, and whoa, she that girl now thirty, just had a baby, her first grandchild for this for this woman I was talking to. She's not been able to see her grandchild. This is the first grandchild. She's not been able to come not been able to hold this is you know i'm a grandmother i want a real this is i want to have a relationship with a grandchild a loved one I say you do do and, and i hug my daughter oh this is lovely relationships that but we as a church we as a people within the church pete greg on the prayer call that we've been doing it Home groups we've done in the past of church. There's the ego. Jesus is praying right close to his death 
and he's praying to the Father saying, I want them to have this relationship. I want them to know this relationship that you and I have. He's praying that we would know that. And therefore, I've just been living that. What am I doing to allow that to happen? What am I doing which, when I see something which would irk me normally? Actually. Like <laughs> no, what, I've, I've really had to work through, I love music. We, we love music in this house. We love Christian music. There was a thing on, on the internet, which questions do you have? And I'm, that went straight through me. I thought, here you are being incredibly negative about Christian music. You were talking. The reason, okay, so he's a pastor, he's worried, so he's talking to his church that he's worried and he wants to protect them. That's his role. Pastor's a shepherd, he should be protecting his flock. What saddens me is it was on the internet. If that's something you're doing to protect your flock and protect those that you care for, fine. Because that's what God has put on your heart to protect your flock. Don't, don't brawl. Don't be negative because unfortunately, you know, the media just pick it up and just go there and just boom. In Romans 14, it talks about, Paul talks about how we are servants of the master. I'm a servant of God. Carol's a servant of the master. Now, in her relationship with God and in my relationship with God, you know, things are slightly different because we're different people. But does that mean what's happening in her relationship with God, I can say, well, that's wrong, because it's not what's happening in me. Paul goes, hang on a minute. No, that's not the case. You know, as soon as I am negative about Carol's relationship with God, I'm actually being negative about the master, her master. So I have to be really careful. This is Jesus' prayer, that we will be one, that we be into that amazing relationship as a family. The relationship that he had with his father, has with his father. And this is because the Holy Spirit has given to us. I think we've said enough Yes, now. we have. Um, and thank you for listening. And if you've got any special photographs you'd like to put on our WhatsApp group of a relationship that you have with something or someone, um, do that. It'll be lovely. And we're happy to see you later on Zoom. So see you soon. Bye. Bye.